I will begin speaking about why you came to the church, the universal church. Why did you convert? What was the reason for you to convert? So many converted due to a miracle they received. They were healed, they were delivered, they were set free, healed, and they had a new life. And from then onwards, they wanted to serve God, to pass to other people that which they tasted from God. Many people in the days of Jesus, they were healed, they were blessed. And in the days of the apostles, they were healed, they were blessed. However, along the journey towards the land of Canaan, which is the kingdom of heaven, many fell. They became corrupt. They lost their faith or they gave up on their faith for personal achievements. And the worst of all, is that many people who have done such, who have diverted and lost focus of their faith, they allege that, come on, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and life with abundance. So I have the right to a life of abundance. And I'm not having this life with abundance, so I'm going to chase after this. I will seek for this abundant life. And then, here is where the greatest risk of life is. It is the greatest risk a person runs from his salvation. It is the greatest risk. Because they surrendered their lives to Jesus, they were set free, they were saved, etc. But now, not being satisfied 100% with the surrender of life unto Jesus, they seek for a space in this world to conquer material things, material goods house, money, family, husband, wife. In summary, they want to take possession of this life with abundance in this world or of this world. And you need to understand one thing. It is not worth it by no means for you to put at risk your salvation because of what the world presents, because of what you think is right. You think that life with abundance is here on earth. You think that life with abundance is here on earth. And in actual fact, the abundant life is here on earth, but is not this abundant life which you think of having a thousand pairs of shoes, of having many houses, a lot of money, a lot of things. It's not that. It's not that. A life with abundance in a spiritual sense is for you to have the daily bread with abundance. Amen. Is for nothing to lack. So it is life with abundance. You eat what you want to eat. For you to drink, for you to live an upright life, 
limited, not an extravagance, exuberating, but a life limited to that which you need. Because the life with abundance Jesus promises is not here. If it was like that, the Apostle Paul, the most enlightened man amongst the Apostles, yes or no, was he not? He climbed up to the third heavens. He had extraordinary visions and he met with Jesus. How was the life of Paul? It was a life of sacrifice. It was a life of challenges. He lived the last years of his life imprisoned, tied. There, was, there would be a soldier who would be tied to him, stuck to his body. 24 hours, they would change. They would change. They had a schedule for the soldier, so he would be stuck. He was tied until he was decapitated. Where is the life of abundance Jesus gave him? That's the question. Where is it? And if you look at the kings, you look at the life of Solomon, you can read later on in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, you will see that Solomon hated this life of abundance he had. Read there. Because the life of abundance, my friends, is for you to be satisfied with what you have. Amen. Satisfied with that which God has given you. So we live a life of abundance. I live a life of abundance. How do I live a life of abundance? My table is not a table that goes from here to there with a lot of food because I can't eat everything. Or can I? I can't. It's of no use for you to have a thousand cars you only use one. It's of no use for you to have a thousand suits, you only wear one. It's of no use for you to have a thousand pairs of shoes, you only wear one. So when we, when we are spiritual, when we have the Holy Spirit, we have the discernment of what is righteous, of what is right. For example, you are in the faith, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's only fair for you to have perfect health. Amen. That's fair. Because, come on, my Lord, my body is the temple of your spirit. It's not fair for my body to be sick. So you can demand this from God. You have the right to do this. Is it fair for you to have, it is fair for you to have on your table that which you need, that which you enjoy. So life with abundance, which God promises, which Jesus promises, is there in heaven. Look what Paul said with regards to this kind of thing. He says, 2 Corinthians, you can read it later. You can read it later. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. You will see that in a specific moment he said, Saddened by the situation, he's anguished. I become sad. When I see so many people 
lost. Not the unbelievers. The unbelievers lost. We know that they are lost because they are unbelievers. But what makes me to be anguished, saddened, is to see people who claim to believe in Jesus, who confess the Christian faith, but are deceived by the spirit of deceit. They are possessed by the spirit of deceit. Paul said, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing verse 10 so we are sorrowful for seeing the desperate situation in the church an assistant come on an assistant living in lies so we have no idea we know that this person does not have the spirit of truth an assistant being corrupt pastors having relationships with women who are the, not their respective wives committing adultery fornicating but speaking about the truth but preaching the truth but living in lies preaching the truth living in lies this is what saddens us because we speak we teach so this brings us a deep sorrow, but within us, on the other hand, there is a joy, the, re the joy of the Holy Spirit. So when we have the Holy Spirit, although being sorrowful because of the circumstances within us, there is the joy of the Holy Spirit which does not leave because we are saved. Our conscience is cleansed, purified. We have nothing which condemns us. Praise be to God. So this is the greatest riches, the most abundant life you, might, you may have to put your head against the pillow and sleep uh, and rest peacefully sleep with peace you have your house in peace you eat the bread of peace at times I like I like this new mili at times they bring me of this new one so I eat it with pumpkin and rice and beans, cauliflower. I despise the chicken, the fish, the beef for that food from a specific kind of food. So that's my life with abundance. For me, that's abundant. Amen. For others, no. But for me, it's life with abundance. So I eat the bread of peace. Paul says, he says the following. You can read it later on. Say 2 Corinthians chapter 6. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor. Como pobres, as poor. Yet making many rich. So a pastor, a bishop makes a campaign, the service of Monday, he enriches people, but he continues being poor. But he's rich. Are you getting what I'm saying? He says, yet making many rich as having nothing and yet possessing all things. This is verse 10. Having nothing and yet possessing all things. So a life of abundance is not a life that's lavish where you eat until you push the food down with a fork. No. No. It is a simple life, but which lacks nothing. You eat what you enjoy. You dress that which you like. You walk in a path of life which you like, in peace, with joy. A life with a light conscience, the divine conscience. Amen. And there's more. 
Paulo fala assim. Paul says the following. Se esperamos If in this life em Cristo only we have hope in Christ nesta vida somos os mais we are of all men the most pitiable de todos os homens que, 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 que ele quer dizer com isso what does he mean with this quer dizer o seguinte It means the following, if I work, if I fight, if I strive, I give the best of myself to have more houses, to have this, to have that and have something else, to live in luxury. I am the most pitiful amongst all men because I am leaving the most important, which is my relationship with God, my faith the joy, the peace to get involved with the things of this world. Remember, when Jesus speaks about the sower, he says that one part of the seed fell amongst the thorns. And these were suffocated it suffocated the fruit of the seed so what does this mean the cares of this world the ambition of riches luxury people you need to understand one thing quando você tem o Espírito Santo When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the direction of God. Jesus said, when the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into what? All truth. So, whoever has the Holy Spirit walks in the truth. He has discernment of the truth. So, when a person has the Holy Spirit, he does not look at others with envy that that person has this and has that and also whatever else. Because it doesn't matter to him. What matters is what he already has. It's enough. He already has the abundant life within him, which is the Holy Spirit. Do you know what it is for you to have the Spirit of the Almighty God inside of you? Do you know what it is for you to have the Spirit of the Creator within you, to carry within you day and night without ceasing, 24 hours a day? For you to have the Holy Spirit. Do you want a life more abundant than this? What can this world give to us which surpasses the presence of the Holy Spirit inside of us? What is there which exists in this world which can add to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life? Nothing. Nothing. But the eyes of envy, vanity, the greed, the vetiousness and wanting that which the neighbor has, what others have, what the other assistant or the other pastor has. So this shows that the person does not have the Holy Spirit because whoever has the spirit of truth lives in truth. He doesn't look at so and so or the other, whoever, because he's satisfied. He is satisfied. Is he not? I'm satisfied. They ask me, Bishop, but don't you see this or see that? The past isn't. No, I do not look at anybody. I don't care about anybody. I don't look at anyone who claims to be well. I don't want to know about that. I want to know about my relationship with God and to help those who are needy and are lost. But the others who are doing their work, other pastors, other bishops, etc. I look at myself. I look at my work. I focus on my work. In order to not waste time and consume my mind, which is no longer so fertile. I will not occupy it with other things, looking at what so-and-so is doing. No such thing. I'm going to look at myself. 
And this is the problem. Many assistants, they fall, pastors fall, because they're looking at others. I'm going to put these clothes on, because so-and-so is going like this, and I'm also going like this. You're taking the wrong action. You're not being guided by the truth because you are looking at yourself in relation to the other person, to the other assistants, to the other pastors. Oh, she got married. Also, I also need to get married. Was this not the testimony of that lady, Alessandra, who was well in the church, she was conquering, etc. And then she, she found an assistant who said, I'm getting married. And that assistant asked her, aren't you going to get married as well? Are you going to get, are you going to age single? So the assistant asked her, are you going to age when you, are you going to age single? She was walking in the truth. She rather gave ears to this lie. So she aspired in getting married. So she thought, oh, she's getting married. I'm also going to get married. Oh, come on. I also want to get married. And that was it. And she found a man who disgraced her life. She went through hell. You probably watched her testimony. Why? Because she gave ears to an assistant who said that she was getting old. But now, if this assistant, or better said, if she was satisfied with what God had given her, she wouldn't even bother with what that assistant had said. Because this happens to all of us. All of us have two ears. Our ears are ready to hear the voices which we have around. Be it the voice of God, the voice of the devil, be it the voices of people. But when a person has the Holy Spirit, he only gives ears to the voice of God. He does not give ears to the voice of blah, blah, blah of anyone. He does not look to the life of others and inciting envy and covetousness. No. He takes care of his salvation. He cares of his riches. He cares for his abundant life which God gave him, his faith. And he fights with his teeth and nails and overcomes the day-to-day -day of temptations of problems of difficulties why because he has the spirit of truth so he fights against the lies which the world sows just as we sow the truth to others the world sows lies amongst us it's the weed. So you need to be attentive to be alert, to have the discernment of what is good and what is not and choose what is good and despise what is worthless. And the Holy Spirit is the one who guides us to have this discernment, the spiritual discernment. No, I do not want this. This talk does not please me. This advice is not from God. So there is a discernment of the Spirit which makes us to remain in the truth, in the right path of righteousness, and not to get involved with cheap talk from those who claim to be assistants, claim to be pastors, who claim to have the Holy Spirit, but they sow things which have nothing to do with God. Use your mind, my friends. Use your intelligence. If you have the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Truth gives you discernment. And if you fall in temptation, you fall because you wanted to fall. It's not because you slipped up, you got distracted. No. You fell because you wanted to fall because the Holy Spirit who is in you, if indeed He is, He alerts. Be careful. Be careful. Caution. You're wrong. 
Então, quando se trata de vida com abundância, so when dealing with life with abundance, this abundant life is for you to have the Holy Spirit. É você ter o Espírito Santo. It's for you to have the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, whatever might be the environment, the circumstances, whatever desert it might be, you remain. You prevail. So Paul, he says, se a nossa esperança If our hope in the Lord Jesus is only in this life, we are the most pitiful on the face of the earth. Because the true faith is not upon material achievements, personal achievements. The ten lepros were healed. Only one returned. The nine went away. On the other hand, <laughs> the prophet Elijah Elijah, when Naaman was healed and he offered him much riches, he said, you can go, we don't want any of this. Because he was of God, he was already rich. He had the Holy Spirit. He had the Spirit of God. Oh, you can take this away. I lack nothing. I already have life with abundance. I don't need gold. I do not need silver. I need nothing. However, his servant is not like this. Gehazi, he ran after the man and lying, saying that he would need it because the prophet had asked, etc., and he himself grabbed some. And Naaman's leprosy was passed on to him. Perhaps you have become leprous. You're not well on your legs. You are leprous because you touched, you grabbed that which the men of God rejected, the prophet of God rejected, which God rejected. You took it for yourself. So you took the evil of the person whom you had offered to God. Who had offered it rather to God. Be careful. Do not lose the abundant life you have. Amen. Do not lose this life with abundance. Do not lose. Do not lose this life of abundance for money. Do not lose the abundant life because of marriage. You want to get married. You have the desire of getting married. You want to start your family. If you put this as a priority in your life, oh, now I have the Holy Spirit, now I want to get married. And then you show to the devil your weakness. You point to the devil your weakness. Your inclination is this. I want to get married now. And the devil will find you a marriage. And he will disgrace your life. The Bible says that the devil walks surrounding like a ferocious lion. Roaring like a ferocious lion. Is it not like this? The devil, 24 hours a day, is surrounding my life. Imagine. Imagine. Just as he does in my life, he does it in yours as well. And all those who are of God, he is there. Encircling them. Surrounding them. Just observing. Where do we incline to? So if by any means I have an inclination to vanity, oh, so he knows. He's aware of how he can catch me with vanity, with my vanity. He will set a plan, a project to catch me through vanity. If I have the tendency 
for riches. I want riches. Then mm, he will plan for me to fall into the sin of riches. If my tendency is to seek the glory of this world, oh, that's what I like, the devil will say. So he will set a plan for me to fall. Knowing this, therefore I am watchful over my treasure, the abundant life Jesus gave, God gave me 24 hours a day. Do you get what I'm saying? Why? Because I'm not going to put to risk by any means the abundant life the Lord gave me, which is the Holy Spirit, my salvation, the guarantee, the seal, the seal, the stamp of my salvation. I will not put it to risk. I know that the devil is surrounding He's expecting one flaw. And since he expects a flaw from me, he expects a flaw from you as well. If you have any sort of ambition, which is not to do the will of God, you're an assistant, you are of God, you want to do the will of God, you are of God, you want to do the will of God. Will of God. Will of God. If you have an ambition which opposes the will of God, Satan will catch you and he will throw you into the same pit where the fallen, the posture of fallen, the lost, the diverted ones who one day sat on the same chair you were seated on now. Be intelligent. Use your mind. Do not think that you are an assistant. Oh, now I have the Holy Spirit. I'm an assistant. I'm relaxed. Because I do not think like that. I am watchful 24 hours a day, all the time. To not allow any gap for the devil to take advantage of. But Bishop, but isn't the Holy Spirit in you? Of course he is. This is why Jesus said, Watch and pray. To pray is extremely important, but to watch is even more. It's of no use for you to pray, 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 but not watch. You need to watch first. You need to have your eyes open, to be attentive. So that the devil may not steal your riches, the abundant life you have. Jesus said, the life of a man, the life of a person is not in the goods he possesses. Is it not true? Yes or no? So, when we deal with people who are unbelievers outside, whom we say to them, you're living in misery, you're living a disgraceful life. Jesus came that you may have life and life with abundance. So that person thinks, oh, really? So I'm going to Jesus because I want this abundant life. Amen. They come, they go to Jesus. But when the person enters and converts and is set free and is saved, then we say, look, the abundant life is inside of you, which is the kingdom of God. Amen. Is this a deceit? No, we are speaking the truth. Because this is truly, it. this is a fact. We will always say the devil came to kill, steal and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and life with abundance. So not the abundant life. That life with abundance in which you will be a, filled with gluttony and fill your stomach with so much food. And, but you will rather be that person who will be conscious of what is right and wrong. You will choose what is right. You will choose what is right. You will live upon what is righteous because the Holy Spirit guides you. He directs you into all truth. Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will guide you into all the truth. 
se você anda com mentiras. So if you live with lies, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Se você anda em prostituição, if you live in fornication, you do not have the Holy Spirit. O Espírito Santo não pode. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell with a person que está meio lá, meio cá. who is a little bit there, a little bit here. When a person has the Holy Spirit, he is determined, he is decided. He is of God, he is rich. He does not envy the rich, the wealthy, no. He lives his life in tranquility, in peace with himself, and above all with God. Amen. There's more. Just look. When Moses left Egypt with the people who were slaves, which was our cases, our case as well, one day we left slavery. Is it not true? You left slavery. You were delivered from slavery, wasn't it? So the same thing happened to the people of Israel. The people of Israel left slavery. Now they're free. Oh, yes, I'm free. But in the desert, he was led by, he was led in the desert. So in the desert, so God sent the father-in-law of Moses to speak to Moses because Moses carried upon himself the burden of all the people. He attended to people, oh, look, so-and-so stole my, my sheep. And then another one would come, hey, this one came and touched what was mine. Oh, and this one committed adultery, took my wife. So there was a problem every day. Moses guiding that multitude and solving problems daily. Moses had no capacity to control that situation. So Moses' father-in-law went to him and said these words. Procura, procura, Moisés. Search. Homens capazes, tementes a Deus, homens de verdade, que odeiam, odeiem a avareza. E põe-nos sobre eles por maiorais de mil, maiorais de cem, maiorais You shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten. So he says, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. God is searching for men as these. Not only men as male, but men and women. God needs all. The men and the women. But he is searching for people who are True, filled Pessoas with the Holy Spirit. People who are of truth, Pessoas sincere. People who are of truth, with integrity. People who are of truth, who want to give of themselves for those who are losing in this world. Men who truly put their lives on the altar in favor of people who are dying. Right now, how many people are thinking about suicide? The biggest disgrace, the worst pest, the plague which exists right now is depression. Even pastors are killing themselves. Even pastors. If pastors are killing themselves, imagine the sheep or goats. 
Imagine. Imagine. Deus quer salvar a todos. God wants to save all. Mas como que ele vai salvar? Ele vai But salvar how will he save? He will save os instrumentos using as pessoas, the instruments, the people who are his. Deus está buscando pessoas God is searching que people who can contribuir contribute in order for his kingdom to come to this earth so that his will may prevail on this earth. He is searching people who are upright, people of truth, people who hate covetousness, who are not linked, connected to money. They want money. They want to make money. Praise be to God because God chose me because my heart is in nothing of this world, nothing. The devil can offer whatever he wants. He can offer me whatever he offered Jesus. It does not move me because I'm already rich. What can he offer me besides what I already have? What will he add apart from what's already within me? If you have the Holy Spirit, my friends, truly, truly, not, it's not half. Either you have or you don't have. Either you have the Spirit of God or you do not have the Spirit of God. There is no more or less. So if you have the Spirit of God, what does this world have for you? What does this world have to offer to you? What is more precious in this world which can corrupt you? Nothing. Nothing. There is no money. There is no woman. There is no success. There is no family. There is nothing. Because you are already complete. You are already perfect. You are already perfect. Deus está buscando... God is searching for these people who truly have the Holy Spirit in order for them to sacrifice their lives on behalf of those who are dying, lost, those who are enslaved still in Egypt. So now I'm going to say something to you. Very interesting. Many people are living with Naaman's leprosy because they only think about themselves. They only think about themselves. They only think about themselves. Now I want this, I want that, I also want the other thing, I want that. They think, now I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. In summary, when a person thinks about himself, he only thinks about himself, it's because he does not have the Spirit of God. You're an assistant, pastor, bishop, whatever you might be, but you think about yourself, you do not have the Spirit of God. Really, you don't. Why do I not have bishop? What is the first great commandment of the laws of God? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, which means there's no space for anything else. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, it's 100%. There's no space for any other thing, for no one. First, it's God. No space for money, for women, for family, for nothing. With all your mind, with all your strength. is not that which is the Holy Spirit. How can you love someone whom you do not know? But when the Holy Spirit comes, then yes, you can love God above all things. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are rich. You receive God's riches. You are like this with God. You are connected to God. You are God's friend. It's obvious. If you have this relationship with God, you and Him are married. 
which is the main aspect, the vertical arms of the cross. So the second greatest commandment, which one is it? You shall love your neighbor as yourself, which means the first is with God. When a person is connected to God, has the Spirit of God, so he has a passion for those who are suffering. Passion. When Moses heard the advice of his father-in-law, look for true men of truth, people of truth, people who hate covetousness, people who truly want to contribute in order for these people who are enslaved in their minds to become educated, or to have life or to have the spirit which God has given you to. This is my faith. Esse é o meu segredo. This is my secret. Eu me angustio. Fico I am irado. anguished. I become revoltado de ver revolted usando when I see the devil using people deveriam estar ajudando outras pessoas who are meant to be helping other people but are thinking about themselves. Você, when you, você when you worry about your marriage, you want to marry. For example, you're single, you want to get married, you become anxious, anxious to get married. The longer you are anxious, the longer it will take for you to get married. Pay attention. Whatever you are anxious to solve, this happens to us. I want to solve a problem. Oh my God. I'm impatient, but the more, the longer I am impatient, the longer it delays for that dream to take place. Because what I'm worried about solving swiftly, what I want to conquer swiftly, I am no more, no less than distrusting, disbelieving that God is in control of all things, including of my life. I cease to trust in him, to trust in my strength, the strength of my arms. So that becomes postponed. But I have the Holy Spirit, yes, I do. But if I surrender, I give in to worries or to an anxiety, it doesn't happen. It does not happen. Do you get what I'm saying? This is it. Jesus said, By your words, you shall be justified. Is it not so? And by your words, you shall be condemned. What is the word which proceeds out of your mouth? What is the word? You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. You truly have. I have the Holy Spirit. But if one word which I say is against me, oh my God, things are not happening. Just look, oh, come on. I'm lamenting, I'm complaining, a negative word which I say. The devil and the demon say, Amen. Então eu sou. And so I am punished by my own words. But when I confess the faith, when, although before the challenges, the storms, before the problems, before the deserts, no, we are going to break through. God is with us. He's with us. This is a sign of blessing. I am justifying myself. The angels are the ones saying, Amen. Amen. Jesus said, if two or three agree on earth, two or three agree on earth, it shall be agreed in heaven. When you speak foolishness, the demons agree with you by saying amen. 
when you say something good, something positive, you confess the word of God, then the angels are the ones who say amen. And you are then blessed. So notice how such simple, simple things make a difference in your life. Why do you confess wrong things? Why do you confess such? Because you are looking at the things of this world. The covetousness of the flesh, the, the shine of the world is elevating itself in your life and God's light is dimming. Your faith is dropping and your doubts are raising because you let go of focusing your life upon the faith, the promises of God, upon that which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when you focus your faith upon what God has prepared for you, which no eyes have seen nor ears heard, so you get encouraged, you strengthen yourself, you move ahead because you know that one day all of that will come to an end and you will take possession of the abundant life Jesus promised for all eternity. Where there will be no sadness, there will be no complaints, no tears, no such thing. It is peace, joy. Well, we do not know. It's as Paul said, no ears have heard, nor eyes have seen what God has prepared for those who love Him, for those who are faithful to Him. So, my friends, learn this. I will say something to you. As a testimony to make things easier for you to understand, when I converted at the age of 19, it took me a year to convert. At the age of 19, I converted and received the Holy Spirit. I only married at the age of 26, almost 27 years, almost 27 years. So it took me eight years to get married. But I wanted to marry at the age of 19. First, I wanted to die because I did not want to lose. I was afraid of losing that which God had given me. Then I said, no, I want to marry in order to do your work, your will. It took me eight years waiting. Knocking on the door of one, knocking on the door of the other. Until I eventually placed it in God's hands. I, oh my God. You know what I want. I need a person to help me, a helper. I do not want a woman. I do not want a woman to give me children. No. I want a person who will help me. I need a helper. I want an Eve. But an Eve filled with the Holy Spirit. Not the Eve from Adam, no. <laughs> so the devil knows what are our intentions because we show this. He knows what our inclinations are. He knows what is the inclination of your heart. This is why you fall, you become defeated. This is why many are prostrate and they cannot get up again. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they let go of being those creatures of the first love. When Jesus said, you left your first love. You have abandoned your first love. You abandoned the first love and you held on to the love of this world. Just look. And then your life becomes a hell, a living hell. And I'm saying this, and I know that the majority of you assistants are problematic. The majority of you are. I know this. It is a great weight. It hurts within us. It hurts a lot. What I hear the most is this. So and so. Oh, and the other. And another one fell. 
Oh, why did they fall? Because they had an inclination for the things of this world. Pay attention. If you have a passion to be rich, already having everything, you're wasting your time. You're chasing after the wind. Read, read. Por favor, pega ali o meu iPad. I will read it for you. Just for you to understand the danger, the danger of the abundant life here on earth, the abundant life which the world offers here on earth. Solomon Solomon Preste atenção. Pay attention. Muita atenção. Much Ele attention. Assim, He said the following. Busquei no meu coração. I searched in Olha my heart. Look at his Busquei greed. No meu coração. I searched in my heart. Busquei I searched where? Ele não buscou em Deus. And he did not seek Ele buscou na search in God. He searched in the fountain of Ele feelings. Na fonte do he searched in the fountain of deceit. Ele buscou na fonte he searched do in the fountain of hell, which is the heart. É um the heart is perverse. Então disse... So it says, it reads, I searched in my heart how to gratify, to gratify my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. In other words, Solomon sought in his heart how to stimulate through wine, which means the passion. He wanted to get drunk, to be completely given in to do whatever his heart wanted, which is what happens with people who use drugs. You who has already been addicted to drugs, you want to use drugs to have more courage, to, to have the sensation, to satisfy the sensation, the desires of your heart. Solomon sought this in wine because there were no drugs back then. And then he, he says, I made, first he said, I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine. And then he said, I made my works great. Do you want to read it as well or do you want to hear? So, listen. I made my works great. I built myself just for himself. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. All for myself. I made myself gardens and orchards and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. Look how he was covetous. Or rather greedy. How he was greedy and egocentric. He did not say, I made it for my family, for my wife, for my children. Only for himself. Only for himself. 
fiz para mim obras magníficas. I made my works great. I built myself houses. I planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards. And I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools. There were no taps and water system back then. So I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house, which means he bought servants, male and females, and there were also those who were born in his house who were automatically his as well. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself, for myself, silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. Silver, gold. Oh, my God. Let me say something to you. I never liked to wear necklaces, but I see people full of necklaces to show that they really have jewelry until here. To levant the arm, they need to... To raise their arm, they need to be assisted by the other arm. Yes or no? Not only one, the other one as well. And in the fingers, full of rings, here, 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 here. They can't even grab things, but they're there, full of... To show. To have to show, not... To have for personal use, no. I've got a ring, so it's here. I just use my ring. I need a watch, here's my watch. That's it. Nothing else is needed. What else do I need? But there are people who want more. They want this, they want that. And there are women and men who buy jewelry upon jewelry upon jewelry to walk out like this. Look at me. Look what I have. Yes or no? Foolishness. Stupidity. Solomon did this. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces. I acquired male and female singers. Back then, there were no DVDs, CDs, and these systems which we have of music. So he needed to have people to sing there for him, live. Live. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, the delights of the sons of men. You can imagine these delights and musical instruments of all kinds. So I became great. All he had was to be great. Look at me. I'm the guy. I am the one, the great one. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. No one was like Solomon. Also, my wisdom remained with me. The wisdom remained with him. However, his wisdom was for foolishness. This is strong. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. Hmm. I imagine Solomon living today in the status he was, had back then. If he went to the mall, he'd tell everybody to get out and he'd buy everything. And trucks would leave with the clothes and jewelry. Think about this, the foolishness. At what point the human stupidity gets to? Because he was a wise man. If he was foolish, if he was ignorant. But he was a wise man. But he's here confessing. Whatever my eyes desired, 
I did not keep from them. So if he saw a woman, even if the woman was married, he'd buy that woman or send someone to kill the guy and he'd stay with the guy's wife. Just imagine. You can just imagine. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold. I did not deny my heart from any pleasure, which means he tasted everything. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my reward from all my labor. Which means he was rewarded with that work. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done. He himself did nothing. He commanded people to do. So it was not his hands. But he was the king. He would sign and command others to do. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done and on the labor in which I had toiled. And, and then he reaches his conclusion. And indeed, all, all, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun, which means Solomon, everything he wanted to fulfill, he fulfilled. Everything, everything, everything. Everything his eyes wanted, he took possession. Everything his heart desired, he wanted. He acquired everything with no limits. Why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because he thought the following. If I please my eyes and my heart, I'll be happy. And he did it and he was not happy. Why? Because his soul, his soul was lost. He was depressed. Inside of him, his soul was empty. This is why he wanted to compensate. He wanted to compensate in his flesh, in his body, in his eyes, in his heart, in his desires, everything. He wanted to compensate the emptiness of his soul. He was poor and miserable, disgraced. Are you like this? Are you like this? Are you this person who would like to fulfill and accomplish all which your eyes see, all which your heart desires? Are you like this? Ask yourself. If you are like this, it is because you are depressed. It is because your soul is empty. Your soul is is hungry but if you have the holy spirit all of that is vanity it's trash and you're already happy already rich you already live life with abundance or not yes or no he says this the following the following verse you can later read and meditate ecclesiastes chapter 2 ecclesiastes chapter 2 from verse 3, he says, He got to the point of hating. He says, Then I hated all my labor in which I had toiled under the sun, because I must leave it to the men. Therefore, I hated life because that was done under the sun was distressing. Because I must leave it to the men who will come after me. So he fought, fought, fought. He swam, 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 swam and died at the seashore. Everything will stay behind. Gold, the gardens, the fruitful vines, the women, the servants, everything. 
everything my eyes desired which I conquered, it will stay behind. What my heart desired, it will stay behind. Only those who have the Spirit of God have this understanding. Where will my soul go? God said, fool, tonight your soul will be demanded. And where will your soul? What will happen to your soul? Take care of your soul. If you are filled, you have the Holy Spirit, you are joyful, happy in life. So you are that person who falls into the group of those whom the father-in-law of Moses advised him to seek for upright men, God-fearing, men of truth, who hate covetousness, which means to hate love for money, the attachment for money or anything of this life. Jesus, my friends, He did not give us the Holy Spirit in order for us to raise our chest, raise our nose and say, I have the Holy Spirit. When a person does this, it's because one does not have the Holy Spirit. He has the spirit of deceit, the spirit of lies. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, then he really leans over. Then he really leans over. He bends over to serve the Lord who purchased his life who gave his, gave his own life to save, what his, to save his life. We were purchased by the life of Jesus. Jesus gave his body to acquire my body. But my body only becomes his when I decide, here's my life, take my body, take my life. I accept. I want. Do out of me what you want to be done. Let your will be done in my life because from now onwards I am your servant. I will no longer serve my purposes, my objectives, my dreams. No. I will serve you. What do you want me to do? This is the one who has the Holy Spirit. This is the one who has the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, please read. João capítulo 13. John chapter 13. João 13. John 13. Aliás, desculpa, João 16. Oh, rather, John 16, my apologies, verse 13. João 16, versículo 13. John 16, verse 13. It reads the following. However, when he, who is he? The Spirit of Truth. Who is the Spirit of Truth? The Holy Spirit has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will not deceive. He will guide into all truth. He will not guide into lies. He will guide into truth. So when a person does what is lying, what is deceitful, what is corrupt, what is sinful, you can be certain if you live in sin, you are not being guided by the Holy Spirit. You're being guided by the devil, the spirit of lies. Whether you like it or not, this is the reality. It's written here. Because when the spirit of truth comes, you live, you walk in, in truth. When the spirit of truth comes, you walk in truth. Yes or no? How can a person who received the Holy Spirit live in lies? How can a person who received the Spirit of Truth walk or live with lies? It doesn't make sense. Open your heart, open your mind, your eyes. If you walk in lies, you are deceiving yourself. And do not think because you're an assistant, pastor, bishop, or pastor's wife, that your salvation is guaranteed. No, my friend. If you live with lies and you live in lies, you are marching towards hell. You're marching towards hell. 
And God is speaking to you, hey, you are in lies. Let go of this. Repent. But you know, I'm not in lies. Come on, I have the right to enjoy life a little bit. But you are marching towards hell and you do not know. It hasn't been clear to you. It's one or the other. Either you please the truth or you please the lies. You cannot please God and the devil. Either you please God or you please the devil. Either you please God or the devil. Then he says, he says, he will guide you into all truth. In the following verse, he says, He, he will glorify me. Now I close the Bible and I just keep this word. The rest of the scripture is important, but I want to stop here with justice. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he comes to glorify the Lord Jesus. He does not come to glorify you. Firstly, he comes to enable you, to enable you to serve the Lord Jesus. It is the second step. He comes to make of you an instrument for the glory of his son, Jesus. And has this happened to you? Ask yourself. You do not need to answer me. But ask yourself. Has the Holy Spirit used your body to glorify the Lord Jesus? Or you who claim to have the Holy Spirit, have you been used to glorify your body or to satisfy your will? your carnal desires. Think. Because I'm speaking here about your soul. Solomon had it all. And in the end of the day, he said, I hated this life because his soul was empty. When the Holy Spirit is in us, our soul is satisfied. Amen. When we have the Holy Spirit, we are happy. We face problems, difficulties, we pass through deserts, but by no means do we incline to this world as it happened with Jesus. Amen. It is your soul, my friends. I worry with your soul. I worried about your soul. Because the devil, as I, as the devil wants to know about my weaknesses, he also wants to know about your weaknesses. The devil, he surrounds me. And whilst he surrounds me, he cannot walk in your surrounding, but he sends the devil to walk in your surrounding. So the devils are there surrounding. To see where you fall, where you are weak, where are you failing. Okay, so that's where he sets a plan, projects a plan for sooner or later, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, or next year, because you know the devil is patient. The devil is patient. Just imagine. Look at me. Pay attention. If he, if he managed to deceive a third of the angels in heaven who served God, if he succeeded there, imagine what he can do here on earth with weak people, with men. People who are carnal. Only with the Holy Spirit do we have conditions to detect, to discern his deceits. His attitudes. His attacks. 
only when we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, can we detect the lie, yes or no? Your soul is what worries me. It worries me a lot because every single day an assistant leaves. An assistant enters, an assistant leaves. It is a rotation, a rotation, a cycle. And Bishop Sergio, every single day, he shows on the television, every single day, there's a program just for assistance. Our worry with you is so great that there is a program just for you. And he makes the rescue of those who, although having watched the truth, inclined into lies and fell. So there's a rescue here and there and there. Apart from the youth who help. But you are not abandoned. I did not have this chance. I did not have guidance. No one taught me, and God is my witness. No one came to me and said, look, you, be careful, be very cautious with your salvation. Do not allow yourself to be led by the cheap talk of others. It might be an assistant, it might be a pastor, it might be whoever. The pastor, my pastor, he committed adultery. For me, it made no difference. I did not fall because he fell. Oh, he fell, so I'm going to fall. No, I was not looking to him. I was looking to my Lord Jesus. Amen. For me, it did not matter. Oh, he fell. That's his problem. No one taught me this unless the Holy Spirit, and I'm passing this to you. Amen. Evaluate yourself now. Weigh your soul, your spirit. Weigh. You are that person who says, I have the Holy Spirit. But your life is stagnant. Not stagnant in the sense, oh, I did not buy my house. Oh, I'm not yet married. No, not this, but stagnant in a spiritual sense. You do not have peace. When a person has the Holy Spirit, the first characteristic is peace. He's the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Peace. When a person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, he lives in lies, lives with lies. When a person has the Holy Spirit, he has joy. Wherever he goes, he illuminates, he enlightens, because he has the Spirit of God. You do not even have to speak, but when you have the Holy Spirit, you embrace an afflicted person and that person feels something different. Because the Spirit which is in you makes them to feel a difference. Is this perhaps what happens to you? Think well. Look at yourself, my friend. Every day, every time... I make a meeting with you, I make an appeal. Yes or no? I guarantee that many of you have said, Ish, meeting with Bishop, salvation. He's going to talk about salvation. I'm going to speak to you about salvation until the last moment of my life. Because what I have witnessed and heard of assistants who fell, fornicated, in summary. If you want help, Bishop, I recognize that I'm an assistant, but I do not have the Holy Spirit. Let go. Let go of the uniform aside. Hang the uniform. Keep it safe and seek the Holy Spirit. Do not be an assistant as long as you do not receive the Holy Spirit because you'll be trying to help when you yourself need help. You are drowning, but you're trying to help someone else. 
If you were saved and you could save someone, it's already not easy. Imagine you drowning, trying to save someone else. Let me give you an advice which is important for you to not fall in the traps, the deceits of Satan. Let me give you an advice. Keep this. When you desire to feel the presence of God, you are surrendering to feelings, yes or no. We do not have to feel. We do not have to feel. We need to believe. Sentimento vem daqui. Feelings come from here, the heart. Belief comes from here, the mind. When you give way to the feelings, the devil will provide for you to feel well. How, Bishop? Yes. When people go to the carnival festivals, they feel well. Is that feeling of joy from God when a person is in a club, a nightclub, and is indulging, drinking, rejoicing? Is that feeling of sadness? Is it of sadness? No, it's of joy. And who gives that joy? It is the devil. So the devil, he may bring to you a, a sensation of well-being, of happiness, but also a sensation of sadness and not being well. So if you measure your spiritual, spiritual status in the sensation of well-being or not, you are giving in to the devil. Did you get what I'm saying? Yes or no? You cannot, you cannot give in to the feelings. Because feelings, although being good, it does not give you assurance in the moments of facing challenges, yes or no. So, you come to the church and you're feeling nothing. And then the devil says, you see, the service today was not good. The pastor was not inspired. You did not feel the presence of God. You are in sin, hey? What's going on? Why did you not feel the presence of God? And then you begin to worry. Yes or no? He's cast the, the seed of doubt and you grabbed it. And then he begins to feed that doubt and you become weaker and weaker and you fall. It is not by feelings. Be it the feeling of love, be it the feeling of joy, whatever feeling it might be, we do not live by feelings, we live by faith. Faith is assurance, it is conviction. When a person, a Christian, is given to feelings, he is weak. Because feelings do not overcome wars, yes or no? Does it overcome? Does it overcome or not? Feelings provoke lamentations, lamentations, that's what it provokes, yes or no. But the feeling of faith, if we could use that term, I wouldn't say the feeling, I would say the perception, you perceive that you are in faith. You perceive that you are in faith because you carry within you an assurance. An assurance of what? You have the assurance that there ahead, everything will end off well. Amen. 
this is assurance. Faith is assurance of what? Of things which we see. Amen. Of things which we receive. Amen. Faith is assurance of things that you don't see. And of things which you hope for. This is faith. You do not see, but there's an assurance that you don't see. Do you see Jesus? So he is there with you. If you see or do not see, it does not matter. It's good that you do not see. Yes or no? Because if you see, you need to come for chains of prayers on Friday midnight. But you do not see, but you have assurance. Look how wonderful this is. Assurance. That's it. When your faith is on top, your doubts are at the bottom. And then you overcome. You are strong. But assurance of what? Assurance. That, that storm, that tornado, that all the, those problems there ahead will be solved. Because God is with you. This is what guided me. This is what kept me and keeps me. This assurance that He is with me. I am living. I am living an upright life. I am not in lies. I am not fornicating. I'm not stealing. I am not a deceiver. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a pretender. I'm not ill charactered. I'm doing what is right. I'm doing everything which is according to the Word of God. So. Why will I be weak? Why will I give in to feelings? Why will I give in to the accusations? Why will I give in to fear? No, by no means. If I am right, my judge has to justify me. He has to defend me because I cannot defend myself from all the accusations, but he can from all of them. Amen. If you are living an upright life, clean life, then you are in faith. If you're not living an upright life, then you are in sin and then you are in doubt. How will you measure if you're well or not? Through your life, look yourself in the mirror, spiritually speaking. Well, my life... There is nothing which condemns me. I'm living a correct life. So I'm free. Praise be to God. I'm in peace. There is no doubt. The devil can say whatever he wants. The devil tempted Jesus, but it wasn't working. It wasn't sticking. He was tempted, but he did not fall in the temptation. Amen. So, when you have a clean conscience, cleansed, even if the devil comes to accuse you of anything, do not fear, because God is with you. At times, you are praying, and comes those filthy thoughts, yes or no? Has that ever happened to you? All the time it happens to me, it's always happening. And then I think, oh, this filthy thought comes because I am reaching my Lord. Amen. And then I become joyful. That's when I really pray even more. Do you get this? You are strong. You were chosen. You are of God. What passed, passed. The sin is over. You repented. You were forgiven. You were free. You are free to save souls, to serve Jesus, free to give your life. Oh, my Lord, here is my life. I fear you. I fear you. And I am not in love or attached to anything. I have nothing to lose. What do I have to lose? I have nothing to lose because all that is mine is yours. Here's my life. What do you want from me? Let your will be done in my life and you will break through. Amen. You can be sure that you will break through. If you get out of the Spirit, then... And then there's no guarantee. But if you maintain your life pure, you can get to God as it will be tomorrow. 
Oh Lord, you see my life. You know my life. I am here presenting a righteous sacrifice before you. So it is not possible, it's not admissible for me to be to face injustices in misery, sickness, a defeated life, a destroyed family. You are my judge. So judge my case. Look at my life and see the injustices I'm suffering. Do you have courage to do that? Do so and you will see that God will bring justice to your life and he will defend you. Amen. Imagine if I were to defend against all the accusations when I have conditions, but he defends me and he defends you too. Amen. So, do not give in to the sensation of feelings. Because the sensation of feelings, when it's good, it does not guarantee you victory. It brings you a sense of well-being, but it does not solve your problem. Because you are led by feelings, your life needs to be founded, focused, established upon the Word of God. That's it. It's written, I will do it, I will obey, and that's it, done and dusted. It doesn't matter whether people speak about you or do not, it doesn't matter, nothing matters, God is with you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, there, with your eyes open, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive peace. Receive peace there now. And more than that, the joy of the Holy Spirit descends upon you now. The joy that you are strong and you will overcome. We will overcome our battles. Are challenging, but we will overcome because our Lord is with us. Amen. Praise be to God. You are strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Praise be to God. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful day in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God.